And we're back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And of course, our first major conversation uh, is up next. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari uh, has charged the National Institute of Policy, or for Policy and Strategic Studies, to surpass the best think tanks uh, policy institutes, or think tank policy institutes in the world. Now, the president made the charge during the graduation ceremony of the senior executive course number 44, 2022, at the NIPSS Kuru in Plateau State. Uh, the president, who was represented by the Minister of Transportation, Muazu Jaji Sambo, uh, said that he was delighted to be at the ceremony because of the historic role the national policy think tank, the NIPSS, has played in the life of the people and the potential it has to do better for the nation. Now, he assured graduates uh, that the findings and recommendations contained in their recently submitted report would be attended to and applied by his government for the good of the country. Now, the importance of uh, policy think tanks uh, can be seen in part by what played out yesterday in London, where a leading pr candidate in Nigeria's 2023 presidential election visited one of the leading policy institutions in the world, Chatham House, the Royal Institute for International Affairs in London, to answer some pressing questions uh, from the public there, uh, which the public here in Nigeria have been longing to ask him for some time. Well, joining us this morning for some analysis on this, as we look at the important role of uh, policy think tanks in Nigeria, Barrister Justice Uwebu is a human rights advocate. You welcome to the program, Mr. Uwebu. Good morning. It is my pleasure, man. All right. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on what the, the institution of uh, we 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 have, we're talking about the NIPSS. In fact, we have not just the NIPSS. We have the NIA, which is the Nigerian Institute for uh, International Affairs, uh, the Nigerian equivalent of Chatham House. Um, what do you think led to the setting up of such institutions in Nigeria? Well, uh, for me, it's not only that institution. Generally, institutions were set up for. Uh, mainly for, for for progress and for advancement of uh, of the country, and when institutions like this begin to work holistically within the confines of its establishment, uh, the country will definitely move forward. But the only problem I have is that most times we talk about institutions being set up, but do we have we actually institutionalized these issues or these institutions that have been set up. And that is one of the major problems we are having today. So when you set up institutions, and institutions do not work in according to the policies and the, the, the main aim it was set up, so definitely uh, you will not get a good result. And that's one of the problems we're having in Nigeria today. Um, so let's also talk about um, the disconnection over time. We know that there's a disconnection between government policies, you know, and the interests of the people. So government policies usually don't reflect the interests of the people. For instance, there might be a need to have electricity in a certain community or maybe uh, pipe bomb water, but uh, you find a different policy entirely. It might just be having a super highway or probably having an airport <laughs> where, you know, all of that. So. How do you explain, you know, the fact that over time, policies do not reflect the interests of the people, the needs of the people. There's no connection with government and some of these agencies uh, that they have established. Yes, in fact, that has always been the problem we have in Nigeria. This is the issue of impunity. Because I tell you of a truth, we all know this in Nigeria. Uh, most of the policies that the Nigerian uh, the executive, let me put it that way, both at the federal level and the state level that will come up for the people are actually not what the people need. Because secondly, if you remember, for you to do have a good policy that will benefit the masses, that is why we always call for public opinion so that people can lend their voice. When a government wants to bring up a policy and you just sleep one day, maybe the president or a governor sleeps one day and wake up and decide this is what I want to do. Did you actually try to find out whether that thing you want to do will work in tandem with what the people want? 
But see, here in Nigeria, people are not interested. The, the executive are not interested. They wake up one day and do whatever they feel they want to do without carrying the people along. And that is why we keep on having bad governance every day in the country. So for me, there has been long time a disconnect between the people and the government. And that is why see, today, the people do not trust the government. And that is why we are getting some of these results we are seeing today. All these agitations here and there, all these problems here and there, because there is a, a serious disconnect between the executive and the people. All right. Uh, uh, it, 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 could this disconnect be the reason why our politicians in this country are very shallow on policy? Uh, I mean, you hear them talk every day, even those who are campaigning to be governors and presidents and senators, they are very shallow when it comes to policy, policy objectives, you know, policy uh, formulation. Uh, but we have people like yourself, you know, we have organizations like the NBA, uh, the NMA, uh, the NSE, okay, um, you know, we have the think tanks like uh, uh, the NIPSS and NIA. Uh, what is the problem? Why do we have a politician it's not really, like you said, they just take decisions. Um, you said there's a disconnect. Is it that they don't care? Is it that they don't have the idea, you know, they don't have the idea of, of, of what policies can do? Um, I've interviewed a lot of politicians, especially when you talk about governors. And most times you ask them, what is a policy for agriculture? They don't have it. What's the policy on, on health care? They don't have, they just say, we'll build hospitals, we'll build roads, we'll build infrastructure. But they don't talk up what is going on. What is going on with our politicians? Well, let me first of all say this or start from the so-called, let's say, political parties in Nigeria. Now, you now ask yourself, what is the division of a political party? A political party, as you all know, is a group of people who come together to share common ideology and to take over government. And that ideology they share is what they want to give to the people when they enter into government. But today, as far as I'm concerned, there we don't have political parties in Nigeria again. That is where the disconnect at them. Because what we have today in Nigeria is what I call selfish interest tabals that want to hijack power by all means for their own selfish interest. And that is why we are going down the drain every day. In fact, Nigeria is under what I call the law of diminishing return. And that is what we are having every day. Secondly, the issue of impunity. Thirdly, the issue of can a person give what he does not have? We cannot give what he do not have. Look at the crop of politicians we say we have today. What are their educational background? What are their educational qualifications? Can you press their history from one point to point B to point C to point D? So today, because politics in Nigeria has been the highest investment or the, the uh, uh, money-making organization, that is why everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is throwing into politics without having anything at the head. No technocrats. If you look at the couple of politicians we have today, you can hardly say this is what this person was doing at the at 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and now he's not into politics. So check their history. And you discover, you don't ask yourself, what have they been able to achieve? All this why they have been before they entered into politics. You discover that nothing. And that is why everybody now wants to enter into politics. Let me give you an example. I'm from Imo State. And anytime I travel to my place, I see my, even my mates, I see people. You ask them, what do you do for a living? They tell you they are politicians. You now ask yourself a question, is politics a job? It is only in this country that people have some politics to be a profession. And that is why they do everything to make sure they go there. They are not going there for the interest of the people. Okay. They are only going there for their own self oh, oh, right, so, uh, uh, Marissa, you know, well, I must be fair. I must be fair to some of these politicians. You've had you know, some policies in, 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 in government, uh, really nice policies. You know, for instance, in Lagos State, uh, right from the days of Fashola, we've had the Lagos State Development Plan. Um, you know, it's, it's been there, and recently, uh, I think uh, the current governor had to come up with a new one because they said that uh, the old one had been uh, overtaken by time. Uh, in, 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 at the federal level, you have some policies like the National Sugar Policy, and that's one. You have the National Livestock Program. That's another one. Um, I think when Obasanjo was president, you had seeds. 
uh, state economic uh, uh, development strategy. Uh, you had also needs for the states. You had needs, but they came up with needs, first of all, before seeds. That's another strategy. It's a policy. So we, we don't have a, a, a death of policy, you know, if we want to be want to be real we we have some 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 policies so the, for the, the ones that are there why have we not seen seen any um uh, you know result for now we can talk about for instance the president's uh, empowerment program you know the one where they they mess what do you call that again we talked about it last week where they give out money to to poor indigent uh, 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 people the the conditional cash transfer program uh, the national cash program. These are some, but we've not seen the resultant effect. Should we talk about uh, the justice? Okay, let me leave the other ones. So why are we not seeing the effects of the, the ones that are, we, we have on ground? You see that, first of all, um, you have to understand something. Like I said earlier, we, we all these policies, we have bodies or institutions. But the issue there is this. Have we actually institutionalized these institutions? The answer is no. What I mean by institutionalizing is not just to go and sit up an institution, build a mansion, and somebody gets in there. All those people that get in there, they only go there to enrich their pocket. They are not even interested in following the men and why that establishment was done or something like that. Today, for example, you have the ESCC, you have the ICPC, you have all the rest. And what is happening? The president or whoever that is there will use all these positions, the MDs and CDOs, to, you know, settle his people or political loyalties. And that is why we're not getting results. If one person is not there, the, the problem or the institution dies. It's not about, you know, working with the tandem of the institution's guidelines and policies. That is what I'm trying to say. Now, you talk about policies that have been done and all the rest. Now, let me also ask you a question. When there are good policies, people will actually know and people will enjoy. It will affect people positively. You brought a policy where you say you're sharing money, 10,000, 20,000 to the people. Of what effect will it be to Nigeria? Is that what Nigerians need? The answer is no. Let's stop deceiving ourselves in this context. I'm happy you said some politicians. Yes, some of them might have a good policy. But you're not having a good policy. When you have the good policy, what is the gear that will drive it? You have a, a good gear to drive it. And the, the problem we always have this all this work is that people in the home of our faith are not people that are thinkers, are not people that can do certain things to move the economy forward. Everybody coming in, in it, all of these establishments or institutions just want to come and grab. It's fact, Nigeria is today, institutions are seen like a national case. You just go in there, make your own money, and go. Because at the end of the day, no accountability. Nobody holds anybody responsible. And that is why all these things keep on happening year in, year out. And Nigeria is not progressing. We are not moving forward. We have just been kept to be done that. So, but have these institutions, in the first instance, lived up to their expectations, the reason they were established? No, the answer is no. No, tell me one institution today that has been set up that is functioning properly as it's supposed to be in nigeria tell me no you have white paper on this white paper on that most of these institutions go there you see people okay look at for example noah national organization agency who hears about it again we are about to conduct election everything is clear for INEC to do uh, 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 awareness, voters' awareness and all the What is the orientation agency doing? And if you remember, we have this orientation agency office in all the all the local governments in Nigeria. What are they doing? And if you go there today, you see people that are sitting there collecting salary every month. There are, you can go out on our own and so many of them. All those things we are just set up to to to, to, to settle some people. Uh, the president has uh, has promised to implement the the uh, the recommendations made in the uh, the findings and recommendations contained in the report uh, by uh, this particular set, the cost number 44, 2022, senior executive cost number 44, uh, 2022 at the NIPSS. I mean, for years we know that every time they have that, uh, uh, you know, cost this, cost that, they will have a president or someone go visit them or they'll go pay a courtesy call. I mean, they've been having this for years. Must the president implement such policy recommendations and findings? And uh, must government do that? If so, 
should we have a mechanism a, a policy you know to ensure the government implements or adopts some of these policies but the problem we have is that uh the the the, the nigerian government were not sincere that is they are not sincere that is just like i've said before i see a game of all about selfishness Whenever you see them come out to talk on television, they are going to implement this, they are going to implement that, forget about it. It's just for that period. They only want to tell people what they want to hear. And at the end of the day, they go back and do what they want to do. Let me give you an example. Today, I, I bet you, if we make governance or government or the positions less attractive, especially the, the amount of money they are getting and all that, nobody will want to join politics. So anybody today, people, all the people that are working today for one reason or the other are hoping to either be ministers or to be DG for this or to be a CEO for this. Or, and most of them don't even have the capacity. In fact, the major problem here is capacity. Like I said before, somebody cannot do what he does not have. When you have a president or a governor who does not know what to do, they will also bring people that are like him that will not know what to do. So what do you expect? I'd like to ask if you think that some of the policies that this current administration has been running on uh, probably emanated from, you know, the Institute. I'm talking about the NIPSS now. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if you look, no, 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 I don't see it that way. I don't. Because first of all, for me, I have not seen any one policy. This is almost just eight years now. The administration is, is leaving by next year, which is eight. Okay. We we'll probably seem to have a disconnect, you know, with our guests, but we hope that works. we we'll establish contact with him as soon as we can. But we're talking about policies here, and that's very, you know, very dicey because um, it, it's policy that's it's, it's about governance. And so what government chooses to do or does not do it's also important it's also a policy but some people have said that from the policy circle itself there seemed to be a challenge in terms of formulation and then the policy getting out to the point of implementation is there a connect you also want to talk about uh, do we have a connection with research how much of research centers or data are we dependent on i'm, I'm not even too surprised to hear recently you know, a presidential candidate who was making um, fun or making nonsense of another uh, candidate who said, oh, he's always talking about data. But data is very important, and that's how you plan for a government. Uh, that's how you plan for a country. That's how policies are formulated. So what's the connection with, you know, our policies, government and research institutes? Of course, we have all of these are government ag agencies. Is there a connection? Uh, how come, you know, the policies do not reflect the interest of the people? And just like Kofi yes, mentioned, we know. Okay, so we have you back. Uh, uh, it's good to know that we have you back. But I was raising some, you know, questions there. And I'm sure that you, you would like to, you know, react to some of the questions that I've raised. Well, to tell you the truth, the, 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 the truth here is that when these policies are made, this um, executive, they understand that these are the yearnings of the people. This is what the people want, and this is what they want to hear. So that is why during campaign, you see them use all these issues to campaign to the people, for the people to believe them. But the moment they get into power, they forget about it. They know that this is actually what the people need, so that they can connect with the people. But they are not interested. And that is why they are not making impact on the masses. So it's not a matter of making policies, 100 million policies. Okay, look at it in Nigeria. Since, since 1999, uh, many political parties will come, they have 10-point agenda, 20-point agenda, 100-point agenda. Have they been able to establish one? And the answer is no. So it's the same thing they are doing in the policy. Now you now ask yourself a question again. What are the manifestos of these political parties? Tell me one political party in Nigeria today that is actually following the manifesto of the party. Please you say so and simplify it the way it should be. So, so, where, so where does the problem lie uh, now? The problem. Uh, because we have to know the where the problem, problem starts from. Is it in the, the policy formulation or, you know, the, the part where there's implementation? In the policy circle, where exactly is the problem for us in Nigeria? The problem is this. I've been issued. There is no sincerity of purpose. 
That's what I'm trying to explain. They only because they know that these are policies that Nigerians want to hear in order to affect their lives. So they will go ahead and say them and use them to campaign. But at the end of the day, there is no sincerity of purpose. They are not interested. They are not they don't even want to do it. Because let me tell you the truth. When you begin to you know uh, implement some of these policies, it will even educate the masses more. The masses will know more. The masses will know their their their, their ups and downs. And this is everything we see today. This process we see today, 99.9% .9 of them do not want the people, the masses, to actually know what they are doing. They are only lying to the masses. Okay, ju 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 justice. You know that when the masses get to know. Yeah. yeah justice, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, let's, let's, cut, let's cut the president some slack. Uh, I don't know about other politicians, but um, uh, you, you look at the federal government, you know, economic policies um, in agriculture, you have the Anchor Boas program. Uh, which has been there since 2015, launched in, in November 2015 by the president. Um, you look at the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, launched in 2017, um, in agreement with the government of uh, uh, Morocco. You look at, um, in the business sector, for instance, uh, support for micro, small and medium enterprises. That's uh, uh, with the Development Bank of Nigeria, which is a new bank, being launched, a takeoff fund funding, initial takeoff funding of 1.3 billion US dollars at the time. Uh, you look at the ease of doing business reform. That was really, really going on successfully. Now, this is a business insider told me he, they were having it good, especially with the Federal Internal Revenue Service. Everything was smooth when uh, the vice president was allowed to do his thing. But I have uh, a businessman in Lagos who told me that he's been having it tough with the FIRS, with all sorts of uh, things popping up here and there. He doesn't want to pay anybody any bribe or anything. But he said that when they took away this, these uh, people's aides, remember the time they reshuffled the aides in the president, vice president's office? You know, most of them were all these RCCJ people. And people who came in with the vice president, sharp people. There was a reshuffling, and they, they showed them the door, and then seconded people from the presidency to work in the office of vice president. And according to this businessman, this is a uh, one-on-one, -on -one, he told me that that was where he felt things went wrong with this ease of doing business and now if you talk to the average businessman they, they are not having it as easy with for instance payment of taxes you know you wake up today and hear that FIRS has blocked your account so so th what, what do you say to that but we've had the ease of doing business reform there were some successes there for some time uh, pension reforms for instance we've had that and, and all. What, what do you say to this example I just gave you well as much as I'm concerned that was what I said earlier you see, unfortunately, uh, many Nigerians are beginning to know the truth, are beginning to see what people like us have been saying earlier before now. For me, I see this voting as a uh, policies they just formulated in order to deceive Nigerians and themselves. Because one that deceiving Nigerians, they are also deceiving themselves. Now, you talked about the business line and all the rest. Today, you now ask yourself a question, how much is one naira per dollar? And that is why it's affecting business. Secondly, since the inception of this present administration, what we have witnessed is multiple taxation. The government is not even interested in what they can deliver to the people, but it's taking from the people the little they suffer to get and put for themselves. Now, in Nigeria today, you provide your own electricity, you provide your own security, you provide your own education, you provide your own food, everything you do it yourself by hard work, by hard work. But, but and the government is still speaking yeah, you. But, but the point I, I was making, from yeah, you. yeah, that's why the example I gave, I'm sorry to interject, uh, but the point I was also trying to make was that there have been some successes. For instance, uh, the, the policies I mentioned earlier have been successfully implemented. Um, you look at the, the, the Anchor Boras program. It's been implemented. You look at the Presidential Fertilizer <laughs> Initiative. It's been implemented. You look at su su uh, support for micro, small, and medium enterprises in Nigeria. It's been on. The Development Bank of Nigeria was not there. They introduced the Development Bank of Nigeria. Even if you look at budgeting, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Owebu, 
that we had problems with budgeting because we could, the federal government could not keep to the January to December budget cycle. But this president it, 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 implemented a policy it, of making it, it, sure that we must have January to December. That's why the policy the budget is presented <laughs> early. That's a success. <laughs> you know, despite okay. the challenges with ease of doing business, they recorded some successes. We look at pensions. This federal government has had a successful, you know, pension policy. You know, they released outstanding pension to 33%. Uh, uh, pension arrears in 2019. You know, Delta Steel, Steel Company, you had 3,000 over 3,000 pensioners who were being owed. They've been placed on payroll. You had NITA pensioners, 9,216 of them, they were payrolled. You have retired Biafran police officers who were dismissed by the federal government in 1971. President paid them over 571 million naira, you know, in 2017. Nigeria Airways pensioners, over 24 billion naira, they were forgotten, you know. Um, we can go on and on. Implementation of the Treasury single account has been there as a policy. But this, can, this can, president implemented can I, can I, can it. Can I, I come in here? Can yes. I come in here? Yes. Can I come in here? I, I don't know my brother. I wouldn't want to sound it, but let me say this. Um, th these are figures you're mentioning. And I know you do not work in the government because you're not their spokesman. Uh, spokesman. But okay, I but also know that you're putting these figures from what you have had. See, Nigeria is a country where they come out and say certain things and do a different thing. Now, you're talking about success. If actually we are having success or making success in all these things you're saying, why are we still almost... I, I'm not... I'm, Justice, I'm not saying what I heard. I, I can give you an ex I'm a better example. Yeah, I just last week yeah, I had to make a transaction with a government that, office. That I went and I paid on Remita. He online, he went straight to government me. account. I didn't pay money to anyone. I'm not, you, I'm not saying what success have they made. Do you know how much a bag of fertilizer is today? You're talking about fertilizer implementation, blah, 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 whatever. How much is a bag of fertilizer today? How much is a bag of rice today? You see, my brother, can we tell ourselves the truth and be proactive in this country? Forget about what the government is telling you. Forget about it. As far as I'm concerned, this, this, this government is founded on deceit for me, as far as I'm concerned. Because from what I have seen, from 20, uh, 2015 till date, I have not seen any promise that was meant to the people that have been kept, so -so -so -so, and implemented it to the letter. Today, what are we saying? Do you know how much a bag of rice is today? The bag of rice is almost 50,000. But Nigeria is producing what more fertilizer. Saying? Thereby, thereby saving. So Nigeria is producing more fertilizer. You know, we didn't have blending plants. Now we have 22 blending plants in the in the country. Nigeria is producing barista, barista, barista. Nigeria is producing more fertilizer, so we don't have to import. That saving of forex. Nigeria is producing more fertilizer. That's 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 all. That's a fact right now. That's a fact. Can I ask you a question? Nigeria is producing more fertilizer. How much is a bag of fertilizer today? It, it, I, would it, I, would it, would it, I have to check, but will it cost? You tell me how much is the bag. Okay, Barista, tell me how much is the bag of fertilizer, sir. Today, Nigeria producing rice. How much is the bag of my brother? I see. Let's allow ourselves the truth. Um, because it's only the truth that can save us in this country. Justice, justice. Let, let's quickly come back to this because we're coasting this conversation down in no time. I know that we've been talking about. I mean, it's not possible to talk about the NIPSS without talking about you know government policies because. Beyond training um, senior executive officers, including men from the military and other works of life, uh, they're not just limited to training, they're also expected to contribute you know, to the nation's development and all of that. And I'm sure that that's where this conversation is about, looking at you know, the various government policies that we've had and, and why government policy has a disconnect. But um, I'd like to ask specifically for them, do you think that, you know, the NIPP or the NIPSS has lived up to her expectation. Have that really been contributing to economic, you know, uh, you know, the nation building? Have they lived up to the expectation beyond the training that they conduct for senior officers in the country? For me, the answer is capital no. Because if it has been working as it is expected to, by now we won't be where we are. Nigeria is, gradually, is, is sinking, and we must all come out and say the truth and know how to remedy this situation. We should not always, you know, be relying on the government. When they come out and say one thing, they go out and, and, and do a different thing and all. In fact, within themselves, within, 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 within the government itself, there's no, there's, no, there's no connection. 
They are not. They, they, they don't even understand what they are doing, and that is why we are having all this problem. And not until we, we tell ourselves the truth. You know, in the end of Tanzania, once said something. He said, "Except you go back to the truth, that we must persist and continue in error." And that is what is happening to us. So we don't want to tell ourselves the truth. Mm. Interesting. Uh, very, very sincerity oh, of purpose. Sorry. Very interesting question Messi asked and interesting answer you've given. Uh, very interesting point because, you know, the NIIA, uh, the Nigerian Institute for International Affairs, this is Nigerian equivalent of, the, uh, of Chatham House Royal Institute of International Affairs in London. It even in existence since 1961. Maybe we would like to see that they are holding the candidates to account, uh, just like you have it being done in Chatham House. And even having other people from other country, presidential aspirants, coming to Nigeria to answer questions. Um, and of course, you look at the NIPSS. <laughs> Interesting. So what you're saying is that they need to pull their weight and do more uh, to be relevant in the country. Maybe the politicians will take them seriously. But time will tell if they will implement the policy, uh, that the president will implement the policy like he said. Probably we'll have to keep following Mercy to see <laughs> maybe down the road <laughs> if they do that. We'll look for a copy of that report and look at the findings and the recommendations and, and we'll watch. But we'd like to thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh, Justice Uhuegu, human rights advocate, has been very interesting uh, having you on the program this morning. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure once more. Well, that's the size of our conversation. And we'll quickly take a break. But, you know, Kofi, just to just add up, I know that we're moving to the next topic. It's a big issue. Yes, it See, is. it's another yes, thing to say you have a government institution and you have bodies, right? But you also have schools, including the universities. They're supposed to serve also as a think tank. Now, have you, I'm sure that Absolutely. you and I went to the same university. I carried out my research and I know the, the topic, you know, what I researched on. I made my recommendations. I'm sure it's in the, uh, it's in the dustbin because I, I went out to the field. I did my research. Your, your research and the, it's not being used. So it, it, it's, it's not what? used because but, if, yeah. if you look at, you know, the issues, the current issues that yes. we're faced with, yes. especially with the elections, you find that those things are still repeating themselves. And why do you have to, you know, research? Why do you have to do research and find it? I, I think I go with, with the view that um, these institutions also have to pull their weight. You know, that, that last question was very important. They have to do a lot also to be relevant. Uh, well, up next, to look at what... Uh, uh, lies ahead for the Independent National Electoral Commission ahead of the 2023 elections. Uh, INEC and NCC will be meeting over the transmission of results. Very touchy uh, issue. We'll discuss that when we come back. <laughs>